Keane here on Lunchtime Live BBC Radio Cambridge here. And from Keane, we go to the Spice Queen, Parveen, who is my guest this afternoon from Peterborough. Good afternoon Good to afternoon, Parveen. Jess. Good afternoon, Good uh, afternoon. Well, I feel like I know you already <laughs> uh, from our phone conversations last week preparing for this interview. And because of the homework you set me. I've never done so much preparation for an interview than I well, have for today. Well, I it's only fair to give you some homework. Uh, and you very kindly sent me the most fragrant package I've ever received in my pigeonhole <laughs> uh, with a collection of your spices to create tandoori chicken and also roasted cumin potatoes. And so last night, my wife had a bit of a treat. You cooked for her? Yeah, it, we ate quite late, it mm. turned out, because it's quite difficult. And you can tell me about this as well. It's quite because I tried for social media to film things <laughs> whilst I was cooking and it took quite a long time. And then I was like, no, cut, Jude, let's do this again. Yeah. That's, that's not right. I've, I've bodged that up. Um, also, there was a few things which were in my way. OK. OK. So I've got no numbers on the cooker anymore. They've all rubbed off. So oh, we have, have to, to sort cook of by eye. Yeah, what you, you get need. a feel for your oven after a while. Well, like really hot, hot, not quite as hot. It, it was a pan fried tandoori chicken, Jess. I'm sure I'll give you a pan fried. Yeah, but for cumin potatoes. It, oh yes, yeah. of course. Well, number one, uh, have your own cameraman filming you. Yeah, uh, like that you helps. have here. We, I have the lovely yeah. Mark, the lovely Hello, Mark, Mark filming us. Uh, number two, um, once it was your first time. You were a virgin curry cooker person. So it it does. It is frightening and it's daunting. Mm. Even the most confident chefs I know, the confident cooks, will shy away from Indian cuisine. I get quite nervous with chicken too. Do you? Because if if it's not cooked, you mustn't eat it and all that business. Yeah. I'm like, well, oh, I've got to watch them all. I've just touched that. Just watch my video online and you'll be fine, Jez. And I did watch your video, which was very helpful too. Yeah. And it was, I guess, if I was was sat there and I didn't have to turn my oven on with a pair of pliers because all the knobs (laughs) have fallen off. And if my wife wasn't trying to cook a loaf of bread in the same oven at the time, because she forgot she'd she'd started making it. And it so the timings were all off. But that said, Mm -hmm. it, it was delicious. Aha. It was really good. And it was obviously not down to me, but down to your spices. No, you're being way too humble. But way I mean, too humble. Well, how much is it how much is it to um, do with the spices? I would say it's both, Jess. I would say it's the method and the spice. And in all my years of teaching, what people are frightened of is the spice. You know, is it this much? Is it cumin? Is it coriander? When to add it? So when I just wrote my first recipe, which we discussed off air, I wrote, for my, I wrote my first recipe for my son who went to university. And he went to Manchester. I know it's in the news at the moment, but Manchester has a it's, it has a curry mile. Did you know that? Yeah. It has a mile of curry houses. So he rings me and says, Mom, you know, I need a home cooked curry. I said, you live in Manchester on the curry mile, but he wanted a taste of home. So he rang me and said, can you write a recipe? So I wrote the first recipe for him and it was tandoori chicken. So he made it. Didn't work. Really? It didn't work. And I said, what are you doing? He said, shop bought spices. I said, no, 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 no. So I then made a little sachet of spices, posted the spices to him. So we had the recipe and the spice. And he said, Mom, this is perfect. Great business idea. You should do this as a business. And I said, all right, then I will. <laughs> and it took me a year to develop. I liked as well on your website and looking at the video that there was no measuring involved. Love it, yeah. And I'm quite cavalier with mm. recipes. Um, although I did have a problem with your potato serving because you it, you obviously don't know me. Go on. It said half a kilogram of new potatoes should serve six to eight people. Well, uh, I put the whole bag in <laughs> and that was just enough for me and my wife had a couple well, of potatoes. Well, it should come with a warning, shouldn't it, Jess? Because I did say to you, there's only one problem with the cumin rose potatoes. They are addictive. Yeah. They there should are be addictive. A, there should be like a fen alternative. Potatoes. For, for fen boys that has increased serving. Like, <laughs> so speaking portions. of addiction... I've got something else that you might be addicted yeah, to. Yeah, so you, what have you brought in? You've brought in quite a collection okay, for so me today. Okay, so I said to you I was going to do a 30-second demonstration. Mm. Now, people think Indian cooking is a marinade for 24 hours and there's oil and ghee and all the misconceptions people have. So I'm here to take away the misconceptions. Okay, Jez, so these are some onion bhajis. Gluten-free, yep. great for vegans. Yeah, deep-fried, but treat yourself. So when you go to a restaurant, before you have your starters, before you have mince, what do you normally have? Uh, poppadoms. With... Um, a bit of mango chutney is my preference. I don't like the lime pickle. I don't like the, but I do like the the minty dip, minty yogurt yep. dip. Do you know how to make it? Uh, you just buy it, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> in the supermarket now. Watch this, Jess. Should we time this? Yeah. Ready? Okay. There's plain yogurt. Four tablespoons of plain yogurt. Half a teaspoon of garden mint. I'm going to show you. Tiny bit of salt to season. 
That garden We're mint. Have you've to stand up you've for pureed this. that garden mint. No, have you? you get it in a jar. Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. So, right, Jez, I'm going to put that on the plate for you. I thought you were going to spoon feed me like a baby that? there. How many seconds was that? That was Vinny. I'm looking at Vinny. How Eight many sec- seconds. Eight seconds. Yeah, he's the official. Apply to mouth, please, Jez. Okay, apply to mouth. My Jez is eating, so dip, I'm just going to tell everybody. I just mm. made him a quick mint dip, which is mint sauce, tiny bit of salt, yogurt, and you mix it together. And it goes really, really well with any starter, like a, a bhaji or a samosa. Mm. And he's, he can't talk now because he needs to be polite. Just and, talk amongst yourselves yeah, for, just the, talk. for the next half an hour while I uh, finish Can you off. see the flavours really married with the bhajis? It's the mintiness, the sharpness. And do you know why we have yoghurt and mint? No. To cool down the palate. Oh, to take the heat off the... Absolutely, absolutely. Off the spices. Yeah, don't drink water. Do you know, I'm, I've noticed actually with the, um, the tandoori chicken that I, I cooked last night, Sorry, excuse me whilst I'm eating. It's very, very rude. Um, but it, when I put I put some natural yogurt in there too. Yes. And that made a real different. It completely it changed the dish. Yeah. Like on it its is. own, just eating the, the tandoori chicken. Yeah. It wasn't as nice when uh, I'd t- taken some of the heat off with the. Uh, yeah. A couple of things yogurt. that you may have noticed. Did you notice it wasn't red? It what, wasn't what, that what bright. Wasn't? No, it wasn't. It wasn't red, was it? No, Did you feel why? cheated? Well, yeah. Why was that then? Because Did you want it a... nice and red? Well, is that just for show then? It's because it is quite an unnatural colour. Probably. Probably. Mm. I mean, I'm not going to say anything about the restaurant trade and takeaway trade. Yeah. That has its place. But this is home cooking. This is Indian cuisine done at home in minutes. I mean, it was marination to mouth in 10 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you time yourself? Uh, no, because it would have taken hours. Yeah. And it wouldn't <laughs> with the pliers, with the no. pliers. Yeah. So it's not red. And when I'm teaching, people say, oh, Parveen, is there going to be flavour in that? And you realise bags of flavour in the chicken and the spices that I that I cook with. Mm. But it, like I say, um, it's a part in your mouth, not a rave. Why do you think people don't, well, unless there's there's some heritage there, why do you think people don't cook Indian cuisine in their, in their own homes in this country? Is it because you know you go you go out for a curry? You know, as a as a as a white British person, you go out for a curry, you do. don't you, on a Friday Saturday night? But but you do actually. I tell you a quick story, Jez. I know we've got um, it's a one minute story. I was I used to work in Yorkshire, and uh, one of my friends said, "Harvey, we must go for a curry. Come on, you must tell me where the best curry is. I want a keema naan. I want a jalfrezi." And I said, "All right, Gary, we'll go for a curry one lunchtime." After a year of saying let's go for a curry we went for a curry and he hated it he said this isn't nice I said don't you like it Gary he said no I said when's the last time you had a curry he said the last time I was drunk so a lot of people associate go for a few bevies have a have a drink and have some spicy food at the end of it and that's how it has its reputation of having a curry so I just want to show that you can have really good Indian cuisine, sort of where it's not just a curry. You've got starters, you've got mains. I've got desserts for you as well today, Jess. I mean, that could uh, uh, just think for the whole sort of drinking relationship yes. going out for a curry as yeah. well it would would hide a multitude of sins, probably as yeah. well. So you might come back thinking I've just had the best curry uh, yeah. in the world, and it wasn't. All <laughs> you that had your nice. beer goggles on, you yeah. see, when it comes to food. So you've got to get it right you've when got you're to get doing it, right. it in, sober in your own kitchen. In your own kitchen, and in all my years of teaching, they're my my biggest actually fans. Pro- apart from my husband and my children, probably are middle-class businessmen. They love to get in the kitchen and cook with spices on man, manly macho. And then when they cook it, they've made it using my spices. They say, oh, pardon me, that was quite easy. I said, yeah, once you've taken the fear factor away, once you've taken away the fear of what spice to use when mm. and give them a simple recipe to follow, it's actually quite easy. So what if you can give us just some some simple tips on on how to to really strike gold when we're when we're cooking Indian food in our own homes. Oh, that's to get easy. That just, just what, what are we doing wrong that we should be doing better or doing at all? Use even? my recipes. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is about finding a good recipe that works and buying good quality spices, really, and good quality ingredients. So the perception is that curry, you can use any kind of meat, cut meat, you can use mixed spices, buy whole spices, grind them yourself and buy good quality ingredients that are local and in season. It's as simple as that. And where do you get the? I know we can get them from you yeah. and other spice places are available, but a, a supermarket, supermarket, off the supermarket is, shop, is yeah. that not good enough then? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, my local supermarkets have a world, world food aisle and you can buy lots of spices, but I would suggest rather than buy the ready-made spices, buy them, grind them and make your own blend. Um, but... You can make the best dishes with a tiny bit of chilli, really, and fresh coriander. All right. Stay with us. Uh, We've got more tasting to do. We have. Yes, Okay. great. Uh, Parveen, uh, the Spice Queen uh, from Peterborough, my guest this afternoon here on BBC Radio Cambridge. We'll have a look at the weather forecast in a second after this.